This is a question about nerve conduction or uh, signal conduction in axons. And to prepare, let's remember how our model works. Okay, so if we have a myelinated axon, we have the interior of the axon, and then we have this myelin sheath. And the sheath is broken at these nodes, okay? And we analyze signal propagation as an RC circuit. We say this, an action potential is triggered at one of the nodes. Well, that looks like basically turning on a power supply. And then current goes down the inside of the axon, and there's a certain resistance associated with that. And then it charges up the capacitance of the cell membrane. And so this point right here, I'm going to charge up, like charging up a capacitor. When the potential difference gets big enough, it triggers an action potential here, which drives current down the axon, which charges up this node, etc. And so the signal is going to jump from node to node to node. But the basic unit of traveling one node looks like an RC circuit. How much time it takes the signal to jump from here to here is related to how much time it takes the capacitance of the cell membrane to charge up. And so basically the time for this to happen is fixed by the time constant of an RC circuit, which is just equal to the product of the resistance times the capacitance. Now we're told the axon can, can transmits signals at 40 meters per second. And we want to know how that will change if the thickness of the sheath is halved. Okay, how does that change things? Well, the conduction speed is equal to the distance between successive nodes divided by the time constant. That makes sense. How far does the signal have to move? The distance between nodes. How much time does it take? We're going to assume it's basically the time constant. And so this is our conduction speed. And then we want to know if we have the thickness of the sheath, how does the speed change? Well, when we have our new conduction speed, here's one thing that won't change. The distance between successive nodes. We're told no other changes are made to the axon. Okay, so the distance between successive nodes is the same. But one thing that will change is the time constant. So the new speed is just related to the new time constant. How does the time constant change? Well, the time constant is equal to R times C. We need to solve for how that time constant changes. Now remember, when we're looking at the resistance, it's basically just the resistance of the fluid inside the axon. Well, the cross-section area and the length of the interior don't change. That's not affected by the sheath that goes around it. And so the resistance will stay the same. The new resistance is the same as the old resistance. It doesn't change as we change the thickness of the myelin sheath. But the capacitance will change. For any capacitor, the capacitance is equal to the dielectric constant times epsilon zero times A over D. And if we've half the thickness of the myelin sheath, we've halved this distance. And so our new capacitance is just equal to the same expression we had before, except I have one half the thickness, and so I have one half the distance between the inside and the outside of the capacitor. And so the new capacitance is just equal to twice the original capacitance. So the new time constant is just equal to the same resistance, but twice the capacitance. And so it's equal to 2 times RC, 2 times the original time constant. Well, that lets us calculate the new speed. The new speed is equal to the distance divided by our new time constant, which is 2 times the previous time constant. And so our new speed is just one half the original speed, the distance between successive nodes divided by the time constant. So our new speed is one half of 20 meters per sec, I'm sorry, one half of 40 meters per second. And so it's just 20 meters per second. So the new speed will be half what the old speed was. Now let's assess this and see if it makes sense. The whole point for making a myelin sheath around an axon was to increase signal speed. And so if we reduce the thickness of the myelin sheath, we would expect it to reduce the signal speed. 
That's in fact exactly what we found. And so our answer matches our expectations of how the world works.